This is a physician with glare and monocular diplopia from an anterior chamber lens. The pupil is distorted and extends beyond the optic, causing his glare. Gonioscopy demonstrates that the nasal haptic is fibrous within a cocoon of iris and will be very difficult to dissect out. Here we've started the case by placing a pars plane trocar already, and now we're making our paracentesis on each side. Um, we're going to put dispersive viscoelastic over the anterior chamber lens to stabilize the anterior chamber and to protect the cornea endothelium. We're making a self-sealing neural tunnel incision on this patient's steep axis as he has over two diopters of astigmatism. The anterior chamber is entered with the keratone and a MST scissor is used to cut the haptic uh, so that we can remove the uh, lens in one piece. We're now going to try to remove the haptic remnant by cutting it very close to the base of where it inserts into the tunnel of fibrosis. So now we have the uh, other portion of the haptic that is cocooned within the tunnel of fibrosis. And we're going to come from the side now and use a gonio lens uh, much like we would do for doing a, a MIGS procedure, and grab the uh, other side of the haptic and pull the cut end through the tunnel of fibrosis without any bleeding. And this comes out very easily. If I just pulled on this haptic, there would have been significant bleeding and possibly I could have caused neurodialysis. And now we can pull this haptic remnant out through the main incision. We're now going to inject a Zeiss CT Lucia 602 three-piece lens, and we're going to do the standard Yamani intrascleral haptic fixation technique that we've demonstrated many times, so this is uh, mostly edited. Uh, we're using two 30-gauge TSK needles, inserting the distal and proximal haptics into their respective 30-gauge needles, externalizing the haptics on each side. We'll now um, melt the tip of these haptics with a uh, hot tip cautery, and I'm making a smaller melt now these days than I used to. We'll tuck these uh, haptic tips into their respective scleral tunnels and the lens centers very nicely. Uh, we now want to uh, fix the iris and I'm going to do this using a tenoproline inserted within a 33 gauge TSK needle. I bent the needle into a curve and I'm going to do a uh, hemicirclage uh, in this uh, area. Uh, to bring this part of the pupil down. This is the part of the pupil that is most damaged and atrophic. And this is really uh, not edited at all. I'm showing basically how this is done. I grab the iris with a micro grasper, wrap it around the tip of the 33 gauge needle, and the uh, suture which is in, within the 33 gauge needle will be uh, woven into the uh, peripheral iris as you see here. And after I've done uh, five or six passes, I'm going to grab the uh, tip of the suture, pull it out through a paracentesis on the other side. I'll now uh, loop the uh, other portion of the suture out through the same paracentesis using a mini Kruglin hook. Uh, I'm going to do a fourth row tie here. This is a single fourth row tie. I will cinch this knot down. And I'm going to pull the knot into the anterior chamber and pulling on one side outside of the uh, cornea and pulling on the other side inside the anterior chamber with the micro forceps, I can tighten this and now cut this with a micro scissor and the uh, pupil repair looks very good. We're not going to suture the scleral incision as it's on the steep axis. We're just going to close conjunctival with the tenon nylon. This is a limbal relaxing incision placed on the steep axis as per the surgical plan. The trocar is removed and the uh, case is completed. Thank you for your attention.